Last week, we spoke with Colleen Giaconetti of Vanguard in Malvern, Pennsylvania. And we talked about the financial services industry's uh, view of how we can get people to get better outcomes through behavioral coaching and what advisors can do to help clients reach better investment outcomes. Now, we largely agreed on many things, but there are some things that Colleen talked about that she left out and that I think are worth uh, mentioning. First is this concept of endogeneity. A previous episode of Bullshift, the podcast, we spoke with Dr. Preet Banerjee. Preet talked about how endogeneity is one of those factors that is largely overlooked when trying to quantify the value of advice. Simply stated, endogeneity means that correlation is not causation. A lot of advisors uh, give advice to people and, they, and the people can actually say, well, yeah, I had a better outcome as a result of the advice. But largely, the, that's a case of the people who are taking the advice are people who are trying to do the right thing anyway. So you can't really take credit for telling someone to top up their RRSP if they were fully intending to top up their RRSP before you told them to do it. You did give them good advice. It would, you gave them the advice. They took the advice. The outcome was positive. None of those things are, are going to be called into question. What's called into question is the extent to which you can take credit for it as an advisor if you're getting a client to do something that they absolutely would have done without your input whatsoever. So you've got to think about uh, the grain of salt that whenever you get research from people like Vanguard, and for that matter, there are other firms too. I've seen research from Russell and other firms. They talk about the value of advice being somewhere in the neighborhood of three or three and a half percent. And it's always curious because the number is frequently about three times what the advisor's fee is in order to make it look justifiable. Now, I'm not saying that the number is wrong, although I will say that I'm highly skeptical. And But I will also say that the results are highly variable, which is to say, due to endogeneity, if you're working with a person who takes advice, you might in fact do a lot better as a result of that advice, but they might have been prepared to take it. On the other hand, uh, if, you're doing, if you're working with a person who doesn't take advice and you give them the good advice and they don't take it, well, you haven't added any value there, even though you gave good advice because you couldn't get the client to act on the, on the situation. The bottom line is this, uh, a lot of advisors do a lot of great things. I'm an advisor, I obviously wouldn't be doing what I do for a living if I didn't believe that to be true. Be careful, however, not to fall for bullshit. I think if we talk about the value of advice being um, uh, more than 3% on an annualized basis, net of, net of all fees and all of the considerations over the course of a lifetime, I think that's probably overstating the benefit. The other thing is that some things, and this is something that Colleen talked about as well, is that the advice is not necessarily adding value by the same amount every year. It might actually be adding only a, a fraction of a percent one year and then add a considerable amount of money when markets are volatile if they can actually get clients to rebalance and do the right thing at the right time. So it's not as though the number, let's call it 3%, is 3% a year. It might very well be 0% one year and 6% the next. And it might very well be 0% one year and 1.5% the next uh, because I'm, I'm skeptical of the, uh, of the 6% number. At any rate, the point here is that this is, is useful. Most, adv most advisors are well-intended and do good work. And, and hopefully, if you can find a good advisor, they're, they're worth their their fee and then some, I don't know if then some is 3%, but I think they're, they're probably worth more than their fees. And, and that doesn't just translate with regard to the bottom line, but also with regard to uh, peace of mind, uh, thoroughness, um, the ability to take work off your plate and, and not have to spend time doing things yourself because you're working with someone who can make things faster and easier. The bottom line therefore is that financial advice is valuable. And uh, with all great, with all due respect to the people at Vanguard and, and other places, um, this is one person. I am one person who is doubtful that the actual value is as much as three percent. It's something. It's positive. It's probably more than the advisor's fee, but be careful not to fall for the bullshit. And and that's about as positive as I can be. We'll see you next week. John DeGuey is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. He is the author of both Bullshift, How Optimism Bias Threatens Your Finances, and Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry, Protecting Yourself from Well-Intended but Oblivious Advisors. 
The books are available online and in bookstores everywhere. The opinions expressed on Bull Shift and Shift Happens should not be construed as investment advice. You can reach John at jdegui at designsecurities.ca or at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647-782-6387.